Okay, so let me backtrack a little bit. So we introduced this vector, uh, double ampersand, here that's known as an R value, okay? Uh, I'll explain a little bit what that means. And mainly what this helps us with um, is with moves, right? So it's, it's a, known as a move constructor. And if you recall, I was saying the last time that we want it We have two vectors, right? Uh, this is not the code I had the last time. I had different code, but this applies better. Um, we create one vector v, and then we want to create vector v1, but with uh, with a move. In essence, we we want to to overwrite, right? We want to overwrite. So I guess another thing we could do is we could say uh, v uh, equals v, right? So in essence, we would be overriding it but I think this one's a little bit less confusing when we introduce a new vector and we want to have v eliminated and moved into v1 and it's kind of like okay what does that mean so if v has memory on the heap then we want v1 to take over it but the way our code is structured right now it creates memory for v and v1 and all the values from v are copied to v1 which is i, mean, I guess it's, I mean, it's not that bad but this goes to memory efficiency so it'd be better if we just have v1 take over uh, v and then we don't have to create unnecessary memory okay so uh, and this is what we want instead, right? So we create v, v gets this chunk of memory. We create uh, v1, move v into v1. That means like steal the memory from v, have v not point to anything, so it points to zero, size zero, and then we say elements uh, take over v, v, elements v1 take, take over v's memory, right? So that's the concept of a move constructor. And this has to do with managing memory efficiently, right? <clears throat> we have three elements here, not a big deal, but if we had like a thousand or five thousand elements in memory, I mean, why copy values into new memory when we can just switch pointers, right? So that, that was the whole point of this uh, move assignment, okay? Okay, and the example I gave you the last time didn't really explain it as simple as this one. So that's why I'm just reviewing this one, right? This is a lot better example, okay, so. Okay, so before we move on, I hope somebody would say like, well, what is this, right? <laughs> like, what is this guy? Like double ampersand, right? Like, okay, so uh, let me bring up a diagram here. Maybe here, a uh, new page. <clears throat> L value and R value, okay? So what um, this concept means is, can you get the reference or can you get the address of a variable, okay? L value means you can get the reference, like, without any special syntax. And you might be wondering, well, how do we do that? And we've gone over this before, but I'll still cover it right now. If we create an integer num with some value, we can create a reference, uh, whatever, that's, that's the ampersand num ref equals num. And now this one gets the address of that one. So if we show this in memory, we have five here, we make up uh, some number here. So numref <coughs> holds a value of x100. So then we can say that num is an L value. We can get its 
address, okay? And the heaps, as we know, is available, but in this case, uh, we don't use it. So we have stack memory, heap memory, code gets loaded onto memory, stack, static variables get loaded onto memory that are not stack or heap, and then we have special memory, That's a literal, so somewhere in memory there's a number five. The question is, can we get the address of five? And the answer is no, we, we can't. We can't get the address where five lives in memory because we do not have access to, to that piece of memory, to that region of memory. So that's just to show you like L value and R value, right? So then if we go over here, that's that's what we're doing, right? So this one gives us the ability to get the memory region of some other region of memory that normally we wouldn't be able to get, and we get it, right? So let me show you the code here. So in our in our constructor, right, we are able to steal steal the memory, right? So we, we're able to steal the memory, but this is the key here. We say, hey, I know that V is an R value, meaning like it would be very difficult to to for me to get the address, but but with the syntax and C gives me those milliseconds where I can get that memory, right? So so that's what that means. I hope uh, that explains it, right? So I don't think you get you get hammered on this on quizzes or exams. I don't think I ask questions about L values and R values. Uh, but if you see if you see it then just remember, L value means that you can get the address of that variable. R value means that you usually can't unless you use this special syntax with double um, memory operator, right? Or the double reference operator. Okay, so let me go back here. And then we move here. Okay. So this is the code that I showed you the last time, right? And uh, it'll apply to the, to this piece better. And uh, we need to use an R value. And now that you know what it is, uh, hopefully you understand why we need it. Okay, so we go here, and then we go here, and we go stack. And we have some memory addresses here and here. And then we load main. And we have V. Yeah, so V1. Yeah, so. V1, V1. Let me make sure this is a correct example. Mm. <clears throat> Let me verify because I don't want to go down that track if, if it's not, but I have my notes here. Um, here, unless you all can't hear me, I was just thinking here. Uh, okay, let me see here. V1, V1. Okay, so yeah, well, maybe it seemed that I froze right because I was reading some notes over here. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so we have uh, V1. Uh, yeah, this will work. Let me go here and run the code first. 
Okay, this one's with move, and I don't think I showed you this running, so I'll just briefly run it. So we do get the correct results, right? So we create memory, 1HCO, uh, then we steal the memory, right? Give the memory to V1, and then we tell V, like you're not pointing to anything, so then 1HCO, v once removed from memory because it was loaded last, so then its memory is removed first. But notice the memory that is removed is 1HCO, which is the memory that originally belonged to V. But we stole the memory, gave it to V1, and when V is removed from memory, the destructor is called with delete. Our pointer is pointing to zero, and C++ understands that if a pointer points to zero, it's pointing to nothing, so then we don't have an error. So that's so this code is working as expected. Let me go here, create another test case. Test. Uh, okay, so test overwrite v with a value return from get vector. Okay, the get vector is a function. So then we say uh, vector v three, and then we say v equals get vector. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, run this piece and then we'll analyze the outcome. And then we'll go on back, back and draw the diagram. So we go here and it's running terminal. Okay, so we have a uh, create memory. Create memory, delete memory, create memory, delete memory, delete memory. So EATO, EATO is deleted, CC2O, CC2O is deleted, O1AO, O1AO is deleted. So it seems that we don't have any issues, but we do, right? So let's go and, and explain this, okay? So we have V1, did I use V1 or V? Oh, it don't matter, right? So, so then we have some code here, elements, size, and uh, let's get the numbers so we can use some real addresses. Uh, E8CO, E8CO. One, two, three, three blocks. E eight C O size three. You reference this memory. I think I might need some other other blocks. Just in case. Okay. And then we say V1 equals get vector. So let's look at what get vector does for us. And remember I created get vector and it's um uh, a function that returns a vector, right? So we create a vector. Okay, so then let's make this one get vector. Same example from the last time, but it applies better here. Get vector, okay? And then we know that that one's created elements and size three. And then if we look at the output. Uh, memory is uh, CC20, CC20, okay, CC20, I'll pick this one, C, C20, one, two, three, so that block belongs to this one, CC20, here, okay, and then we go back here, and then we see that 
more memories created. And and we're trying to understand like well, I mean like why is more memory created if the example creates a vector here and then a vector is created here, so where does the other vector come from? Like we, we have two vectors that we know have to be created, this one and the one in here in get vector. This one. And then we return V. So the other one must be created because we are returning by value. And I explained this in the last lecture, right? So if we return by value, that means we return a copy of this vector. But why should we create a copy if the vector already exists? Like there's no need to create another copy. We should just decut this one like we did in the previous example, right? And well, apparently the code we wrote only works for this code and specifically when we're using move. But if we're just using the return value function, it, it's not working for us. So we have to fix that. And recall that we had the same issue when we were overriding vectors and had to deal with uh, the equal sign with this guy, where we had to add more functionality. Let me go show you the header. We had to overwrite the equals operator and give our class more functionality. So we have to overwrite equal, but it's kind of like, well, we already did once. But notice here, we have a constructor with one reference. We have a constructor with double reference. So does that mean that we can have another <clears throat> assignment operator where we uh, can return and say uh, vector ampersand? So, can, so is that what we need to do? And the answer is yes. Like we we need to we need to introduce that so that we can. This is move constructor rule four of five for modern C plus plus, and then this one is a move assignment rule five of five in modern. Uh, C++. So this is what we need to do. We need to implement this overload. After we do that, that use case should uh, go away uh, as far as like creating unnecess unnecessary memory, right? Because if we go back to the diagram, uh, another chunk of memory is created, which I didn't uh, show you here. So assuming main goes all the way over here, then we have elements and size, right? And and assuming elements got this chunk over here, then this one's pointing over here. Too many uh, memory creations and move and copy moves. So I mean, copy copying values to different chunks of memory. So we shouldn't we shouldn't go there, right? We should eliminate this memory creation. Like there's no need for this one. Okay, so let's uh, let's take care of that, and we write the steps here, and I have them here. Uh, let me see. Okay, so number one, uh, here original dynamic memory from V. And then two point elements to v dot elements number three get size from v number four point v dot elements to null pointer. Wait a minute, is that the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. Okay, and number five. Set v dot size to zero. Okay, and I better remember to make this part of my class right here. <clears throat> Otherwise, my code's gonna break. Okay, so let's walk through this. Okay, uh, move assignment 
and delete memory. Uh, which memory? Elements. New line character. Okay, and then delete elements. Okay. Point elements to v dot element. So elements equals v dot elements where we steal the memory, right? And then we say C out. Move assignment. And maybe we say again steal memory here, right? Steal memory. And then we say elements which will have a different address because we gave it a different meaning in line 81. Okay, and then we say uh, size equal v dot size and v dot elements point to nothing, so point to no pointer, and then v dot size equals zero, okay? And what's the purpose of this? Uh, to eliminate the unnecessary uh, memory creation, okay? So that, that's what we're after. Okay, so let's go into our test case and run it, but let me clear this piece here. And I'll run it. <clears throat> oh, return, we need to return a copy of the vector, right? So return, uh, I don't have that here. That's a note, so let me read. Return a reference to vector. Okay, so return a, return a reference to the vector. Okay, and we know that we have to say I return a pointer to this. And remember, this refers to this class, okay? like the scope of this class, not not this class here, but the class that currently has the reference in memory. Okay, so let's go back. Let me clear this. And run. Okay, so we have, uh, we still have a lot of output, but if we closely look at it, we have a create memory, create memory and then we delete the memory for v1 and then we steal uh, we stole the memory right and we have a uh, fc20 and then we have a uh, delete memory 0 and then delete memory fc20 so let me see uh, create memory 180 delete memory 180 create memory fc20 uh, steal the memory we're not deleting it but then down here we delete it and we we are okay now. We're not creating an unnecessary memory. We're just shifting pointers around, which is what we want, right? Like that was our goal all along. Like let's shift pointers and let's see what we have now. Okay, so questions here? I know these concepts are like weird, right? So question? Okay, so let's let's finish this piece, right? So, so we're like, well, what do we end up with, right? So we're like, okay, vector v1, v1 equals get vector. Uh, we we know the previous diagram, right? So the previous diagram was creating mem memory all over the place. I'm going to re rewatch, rewatch. Good idea. Uh, well, I'll be honest with you, I don't see this every day so I have to review the notes before I go over this lecture because otherwise I'd be like oh, what was I supposed to talk about I only see this twice a year maybe so <clears throat> so this is the first time you ever see it so I can understand where it could be like overwhelming okay main Okay, so we, we have uh, elements here, and then we have size, 
and let's get the numbers from here okay so that uh, we can follow the output 18CO 18CO 1, 2, 3, that chunk of memory. 1, 8, CO, size 3, point there. Okay. And that's V1, okay? But then we want to overwrite V1 with get vector. We're going to create a new vector and move it into V1, okay? So this one is uh, get vector and we have elements. And we have size. And we go look at the output. And we have uh, FC20. Okay, so FC20. So the memory, the memory is created. Like we, we can't doubt that. So FC20, FC20, one, two, three. You point there. FC20. Okay. What we want is we want. Uh, the same variable, but now we want the same variable to point to this new memory, right? So then let's look at the output over here. And then we, we say uh, delete memory 18CO. Okay, delete memory 18CO. So let's go follow that one. So I'll put uh, delete, uh, delete, and delete. So that memory is removed so don't point there anymore okay and then we're saying okay so I, i'm not pointing there anymore instead point to fc20 it's like okay so point to fc20 so now you point there to fc20 okay and meaning uh fc 20 okay and then we have uh, uh still memory fc 20 uh, 0 and 0 okay so then this one we will say like don't point to anything right so we set it to null pointer and we set this one to 0 so once we do that we're telling it don't point to that memory anymore okay and then this get vector is removed from memory but that's okay we've already degutted it right and we have this reference here that gives uh, v1 ownership of fc20 but the more important concept here is that we were able to eliminate the unnecessary memory creation right so we only have two chunks of memory and we just uh, played with the pointers so that we wouldn't uh, use memory inefficiently, right? So, yeah, so questions here? Again, like if you're like overwhelmed with this piece, just take comfort that in the quizzes, in the exam, in the final exam, the questions you'll see are like, a copy focuses on, on what? And I think it's a true or false question. It, it could ask you like a copy focuses on creating new memory and moving values to that new memory, right? Move uh, concepts in, in memory management focus on pointer manipulation. That's what we did. We just played with pointers to, to steal memory, right? So if you can remember, remember those two concepts, right? Even if you don't remember what copy is, Copy has nothing to do with pointer manipulation, okay? So if you remember that, then, then you can get them squared away. <clears throat> I don't think there's a lot of questions, maybe like at the most two or three questions on the final about this. Okay, drink some water here. Okay, so we've written a lot of code and, and our vector still really doesn't do much, right? Uh, we go here and it's kind of like, well, what does our vector do? All it does is return size and we can uh, index. But other than that, like it doesn't really do much. And well, yeah, it doesn't really do much. But uh, that's okay. Like we were uh, 
<clears throat> no, there's no there's no coding. I'll, I won't ask you to code anything like this in the midterm. Like, fo it'll focus more on what you learn at your tic-tac-toe programming right? so, assignments. Okay, so let me think here. Reorder. So it's asking me to reorder. Okay, okay, I'll reorder. I think that's what it was asking me to do. Okay, let's go back and look at the first diagram we had for this uh, venture here, the constructor. We say vector of a, v, a vector v three elements, and we have three elements on the heap. Okay, so we're not go okay. So, how does the real vector work, right? Like, if we create a vector of three, like what's the capacity and what's the size? Well, I mean, we can go in and inspect that briefly here. So we go to, I know we haven't used main, and we haven't used main mainly because our vector doesn't really do much, right? Like, I mean, we did have this code, but let me introduce the real vector. So, uh, include. You'll see what I'm after right now. Uh, vector, right? So, uh, using vector. And we create an instance of vector integer nums of uh, <clears throat> size 3. Okay. And then let's see, uh, see out nums.size. Maybe we need to put size here. So we we're doing this just to understand how the current vector works, right? The C plus plus vector capacity nums dot capacity. I think capacity exists. I guess we'll find out if we can run this program or not, right? So let me see here. Uh, run in terminal. Okay, so we have, uh, if we create a vector with three elements, right? We're saying, hey, create creating a space for me for three elements. And we're like, okay, so size three, capacity three. What, what does that mean? Okay, well, let's, let's quickly investigate this, okay? So we're like, that means that I can do uh, push back some value and then push back some other value and push back some other value and then I'll say I still now want to see what I see afterward okay so we're like okay so let's run this again run in terminal and we have uh, initial size 3 and then capacity 3 but once we get three pushbacks then we have size six and capacity six so so what happened okay so so let's uh go here and let's quickly just analyze that code so we were here and initially we had three slots, right? So assuming uh, we get these three slots here, and we have uh, nums here, uh, vector, vector event nums three. So this is nums stack heap uh, free store. Obviously, this one points here, and then we I said uh, value five, value four, and then I don't remember the other value, so value 10. Okay, value 10. But initially, we only had three slots, but from the output, it appears that our memory capacity increased right so let's go back and look at the output look, look what happened like now it's saying that we have size 6 and capacity 6 right so 
<coughs> let me uh, do another pushback here. Uh, non start pushback uh, 11, and then we'll do another output here. And then run in terminal. Nums, nums, not num, nums. Run. Okay, so we have size 7, capacity 12. Okay, I think that's no bueno. Uh, let me start at that. So I think when I did this, it assumed that I wanted to create a vector of three slots and then it populated three slots, okay, with zero maybe. And then I I did push back, push back, push back, and then it increased to, increased to six. So that's not actually what I want. So let's see here. Run terminal. Yeah, this looks better. Okay, so. Okay, let me explain what, what happened, right? So when I did this, this it gave me three slots and capacity of three. <clears throat> but it gave this values a zero value. So when I did pushback, it didn't in input something here. Instead, it went and got a new memory block. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe this one. So it copied five, four, and 10 over here. And then I had one, two, three. I had three free slots that I could use. So then I did push back, push back, push back, which means <coughs> one, two, three, right? And then when I said uh, output, then it said you have a size uh, six and capacity six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, capacity six, zero, one, two, three, four, five. The next index would be six. But if I do another pushback, it would go and pick a bigger chunk of memory for me. And then I have to it would move all those values for me, right? So why am I even bothering with this? Well, we have to implement this piece. This kind of logic we have to implement in our vector. Like we have to detect when we run out of space and when we need to create new space, move the values over here and then give us capacity for more input, right? So that's what we're gonna do next, okay? So let's go do that, okay. And then we'll give our vector some some functionality. Okay, so I think we can uh, eliminate this, and we'll come back to this eventually. But we need to go to our header, and we need to write some code that'll help us get to where we want to go. Okay, so <clears throat> we need uh, another capacity. Right, our list can hold, okay, and then current or index to input a value. That's I know its size, and it's kind of like, well, why don't we name it index? Well, its size, right? Because we return size and it returns the size, but we also use it as an index. Okay, so we have that and we need to write some code to make this happen. So first we need a reserve that allows us to get a chunk of memory. Okay, so we're like, okay, so uh, size. And we're like, okay, so let's go write that piece of code. Remember to make it part of our class. We did there. And then let's go write the code for reserve. So let's uh, 
talk about what we'll do. So we uh, make sure new allocation is greater than capacity, right? And then number two, uh, create temp memory of size allocation. And number three, uh, copy values from old memory to temporary. Okay, number four, delete the old array. Number five, set elements to temp memory array. Number six, a lot, a lot to do, right? Set capacity to new allocation size. Okay, so this one will allow us to like go and grab a chunk of memory. Okay, so we're like, okay, whatever. So let's do it, right? So we're like, uh, if uh, maybe we name this uh, new size. If new size greater than or equal to capacity, then we simply return. We can return when there's a void as long as we do not return any type of data, okay? And that's what we're doing. We're just saying, hey, return, exit this function. Okay. <clears throat> create temporary memory of size allocation. Okay, pointer name it temp equals new int new size. Okay, copy values from all memory to temp array. Okay, so we're like, well, what is that? So we say for auto i equals zero, i less than, i less than what? Then mm, size and i plus plus we only go up to size right and let me explain where we only go up to size right so i have uh one two three capacity three zero one zero one two the next size is three so when i create new memory which is what i'm doing right now right i create a new chunk of memory copy the values from old memory to new memory 5, 4, 10, but I only want to create up to size because I only have uh, <clears throat> three elements. If I try to copy anything other than size up here, then I'm going to go into invalid memory region over here. So that's why we have to go up to size only, okay? And then we say temp at i equal elements at i. Okay, so copying value there and then what else uh delete the old array okay delete which one are we deleting i'll show you in the picture right now we're deleting this memory we don't need it anymore we already copied the values to the new chunk of memory okay and now you're getting a, an appreciation for that python list right that was so easy to use i'm pretty sure they have to do something like this to make it easy for us, right? Okay, uh, and then we say uh, set elements to temp memory array. So in essence, we are switching pointers, right? Elements equal temp. So now we go over here, and then this would be pointing to this memory over here, okay? And then we say uh, capacity equals new size, okay? And that'll give us a chunk of new memory, which is one of the functions we need uh, to make this concept happen. Okay, our, our vector doesn't uh, manage this yet. So, okay. Then we need another function, uh, resize. And resize uh, to help us uh, resize that vector, right? So let me see, void, void, okay, so I'm not forgetting any return statement. We go here and then we're like, okay, void, uh, resize, uh, new size, right? 
uh, new size. And let's go write that piece of code. Again, why are we doing this? We need these functions to help us implement that pushback, okay? So that our vector can accept new values. Okay, so we're like, okay, resize. And then we say reserve new size, okay? That's the first step. Uh, maybe I should have delineated the steps, right? So number one, call reserve. Okay, number two, uh, initialize elements beyond size. Number three, set size to new size. Okay. Okay, initialize elements beyond size. What is that? So we say for auto i equals zero i less than new size i plus plus actually this is wrong uh, we go size here and we set them to zero okay so then we're like i'll show you what we're doing here okay in the image and then set size to new size, size equals new size, okay. What is this doing? We go here, so this one's, we're setting them to zero. This here, instead of being junk memory, we're saying, hey, set those values to zero, okay? And that, that's, what, that's what we're doing. And resize uh, and reserve will help us implement uh, Uh, let me see. Pushback. Okay, so let's go here. And we're like, okay, so void uh, pushback. We get some value and then we insert it, right? So that's the next step. We go here and we put it here. Okay, what are we doing here? Uh, if capacity is zero, uh, call reserve with reserve default size, which doesn't exist yet, so we have to create it. So that was step one. Step two. It's a lot of work, right? Else if size is space or equal to space, call reserve with space times space is capacity, okay? Uh, reserve uh, default multiplier. Number three, set value to current element at size, the index, right? Number four, increment the size. All that work, right? Just to insert a value. Okay, so we're like, okay, so if capacity equals zero, they said call reserve, I don't have it yet. And then else if call reserve, okay. And then I have to create some variables, right? They're not there yet. Set value to current element at size index. So we're like, okay, elements at index value. Increment the size, size plus plus, okay. It's a lot of work. <laughs> to do a pushback okay but notice the pushback is monitoring like our memory are there are they out of memory and if they are out of memory 
right? So like pushback here, it's, it's, it's checking. Are they out of memory? No. Are they out of memory? No. Are they out of memory? No. But when we're here, the next pushback, are they out of memory? Oh, they are out of memory. Then I need a new chunk of memory, uh, at least twice the size of this one. So then we get one, two, three, four, five, six slots. Copy the values. This one's eliminated. And then this one's R set to zero. Okay, so it's a lot of work. So let's see here. Uh, we need to create some variables and we will create them in the header. So we're going back here and we're like, okay, so what do we create? Const int reserve on default size and we initialize it to eight. So meaning if we don't have any capacity initially, then we set we create eight slots, meaning somebody can do eight pushbacks before we create a new chunk of memory. Okay. So then we're like, okay, reserve. And by the way, this is not in the book. Okay, I'll his example. But uh, Uh, I'll tell you where I got it from, right? From the C++ creator. Uh, it's Introduction to Programming Book. I uh, forgot the title of it. Okay, so now we have this guy. So now we can go back over here and finish this code. Okay, so we're like... Here, so we're like, okay, give me, reserve me some memory. Reserve, and then we say uh, whatever default sizes give me that memory and then over here uh, we say uh, <clears throat> reserve and capacity times the default multiplier which uh, which should be two right let me see yeah so so we're banking right so we're banking that if we double the memory that's not like too little or too much right because like say they have like 1000 elements and they run out of memory like multiply multiplying it by two gives us 2000 right so while here three might seem like not a lot it's actually a lot of our size is very large so i think uh the standard library creators were like well i guess doubling the memory should be okay you know <clears throat> okay so let me see here. We go here. Let me go here. We have a size of three elements. So actually here, I need to say four image for auto. I need to set them to zero, right? For auto i equals zero, I list them size increment i elements at i equal zero so then i do what c plus plus does right i set them to zero and i was uh setting this size equal size and then maybe here i also need to set the capacity right so <clears throat> capacity equals size okay so if size is three then capacity is three and then if we do another pushback, then we should get a new chunk of memory, I hope, if we have this code correct. Uh, okay, so. Questions here? I know this is like a lot of stuff. Uh, well, y'all think, let me make sure I can compile. Um, let me see what I missed. Oh, uh, this is doesn't like me. Element size equal value. Uh, that's over here. Oh, well, it has no clue what this guy is, right? And then it probably doesn't have any clue what this guy is because we not made it part of the vector class. Okay, let's try again. 
cake closer. Can't see where the error is. Let me move this over here. 157. Okay. Oh, I forgot to include the condition if space else if size is space. So if capacity equals size. Okay, that's. And let's try again. Okay, good. Okay, so let's go. Let me see. Oh, is that? I think we'll stop it here, mainly because um, almost out of time, and we'll continue here, and then you all have a quiz. But let me change the the time, the due date for the quiz to be eight thirty, so that y'all can get enough time. Hold on, let me uh, log in. I guess I'll stop the recording.